Hi right, guys, welcome back to Valor News. Rostermania chaos continues, especially on the loud situation. The Brazilian scene seems to be rather in shambles as it stands, with Loud entirely blowing up their organization and coming to a mutual decision, it seems, with Sadak that he will part ways from the organization. Arguably the best in-game leader that Valorant has really ever seen. The success this organization has had over the last several years, that is no longer the case. Where is Sadak going to go? What does it mean for the rest of the players on that team as well? Other roster rumors of the day in addition. Very much intrigued your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. First of all, the drama, as we talked about yesterday in the EMEA Ascension, is not finished yet. So I just wanted to go through the situation here. I think I explained it pretty well actually yesterday. But just to make this very evident indeed. This is the group play that has concluded for the EMEA Ascension. One of these top four teams will be the team that qualifies through to the regular season and gets into the VCT for next year. However, the ultimate and Job life were tied 2-2 record 5-5 map count and it was only one round that separated the second and the third place team in this situation five rounds to four rounds however in the final round of the final game that job life played they had a player constantly disconnecting from their game and they lost like nine rounds in a row because their teammate couldn't join up and if they'd have won a single one or two of those rounds they would have been the team instead getting all the way through now the drama really was because and i think i implied this yesterday but I didn't actually look at the rule book here so it was worth kind of pointing this out that they said hey can we replace our player this guy our teammate keeps disconnecting can we have a substitute for that disconnecting player they wanted to do that Riot Games said sorry guys you can't do that you've either got to play four versus five or 5v5 with your player constantly disconnecting which um they did and they lost all those rounds very very unfortunate however according to the rule book that is actually possible 3.6.3 .3 in the rulebook says in the event that a player disconnects during a map and is unable to return within the allocated pause time, the team will be permitted to replace them with a substitute from their roster. The lobby needs to be remade, etc., etc. And um, you know that's what they could have done. So job life as a result is saying, hey, we were told we couldn't do that, but we could. The rulebook says that we could. So um, this is obviously a massive problem, right? And this is the other point that apparently the rulebook was not even available to all parties at the time so they couldn't like appeal it immediately complicated situation so um look it turns out that they could have done this and as a result the job life players are being like hang on a second can we appeal this result which is now what they are actually doing so this is very interesting that the vct have seemingly responded to job life and said hey first of all apologize for the delay in the communication we've been in continued discussions on this situation today and um you know we expect to finalize this process and communicate a decision tomorrow it's an absolute massive priority so um, and then there's obviously some discussion from the job life guys when he says sorry for the delay we're still on it official response see you tomorrow and then there was even a reply here from um one of their top guys as well one of the founders who basically says like you know it's a good sign but i'm afraid i'm getting false hopes so what would you do if you were having to make a decision on this because Riot, it seems, the tournament organizer has made a mistake here. They should have allowed Job Life to play with the sub in what was a crucial series where they lost to Mouse in the end. This was their final map here on the Haven, where Jas kept on disconnecting and just couldn't get back in the lobby, and they lost all these rounds in a row. Had they won a single one or two more, as I say, it would have been a very different story. They would have been in with a fight still to get to, you know, to actually win Ascension, which currently they are not. But what's the appropriate outcome, right? Because obviously, you, you don't really want to change the result in hindsight. Do you, I mean, what do you do? Do you ask the game to be replayed? But that feels a bit kind of like strange. But then like, do you add additional rounds? You can't do that. Do you make the ultimates and job life play like a playoff to get in? But um, the issue is for them, if that was to be the case, that they're in the playoffs, they're playing Apex. The ultimates have been prepping to play Apex, I imagine, for the last day or so. So I don't really know what the best and the most appropriate solution is. But, um, you know, someone's messed up somewhere. I think there's no doubt about that. Let's talk about some roster stuff then this is pretty remarkable how dong of course and now world champion on edward gaming he was talking about a lot of things really on the way that his team and the rest of the organizations tend to play the game his discussion was that the shooting skill gap between the chinese teams and the rest of the world is you know not dissimilar he even says maybe the chinese players are more accurate but um the brains the strategy of the players in the western players as it were right the players in the other regions are too good their execution of the little details 
details too. Talking about Boaster, if a player has used an ability, he'll know what to do next. How Dong has watched a lot of Boaster POVs, he'd pretty much hold while looking at the minimap while telling his teammates what to do. So the solution that Edward came up with was to just play a little bit unpredictable at times. And, um, well, their solution was to give him tough situations to solve, such as Kang Kang randomly rushing the site and getting a couple of kills to keep on faking. Now, I don't know whether they took some of these ideas from, from Paper X, but um, it's definitely my feeling, and certainly Bren kind of comments on this as well, that Edward were able to give so many different looks in the tournament. They were able to play a very unpredictable style and throw in some, like, crazy ideas that would throw off a very, kind of, let's say, structured opposing team but equally they themselves were capable of bringing structure and capable of executing that in addition so um, I think that's where Edward found a great middle ground because paper wrecks you're expecting chaos you're expecting you know some absolute madness on the map which is counterable if you play in a structured way which I think is probably why paper wrecks have not seen the success internationally that they probably I wouldn't say deserve to but that their talent and their ability online in the regular season seems to deserve whereas Edward were capable of doing that but then the structured team would prepare for that and therefore when Edward play a more structured style themselves then they're going to be able to win so you know I think that kind of great balance between the opposing styles was what really helped Edward here and Haldong definitely seems to be implying it and maybe something that Paper X should learn from really going forward as well let's talk Rostomania this was interesting to note EU is on 100 Thieves Ocelot Sports by the way is basically like an agency for the players but I'm a little bit notable that he's signing with this agency now given that um you know it's definitely plausible that 100 thieves and EU are going to have some sort of conversation as to whether he's going to be remaining on that team for the longer term even Leaf and Derek here growing themselves something to drink and um you know as Jorgamo there says what time is it about G2 o'clock so he's got a nice little date just on here and um yes yeah, Derek says maybe there's something in that but I guess time will tell the big news though for sure was the Sadak stuff coming out of yesterday now the funny thing is not really funny it's unfortunate but like the Brazilian community has been banned off Twitter, right, by their government or whatever the case is. So they're now kind of sharing updates on other platforms, even threads and other ones as well. But um, it was confirmed yesterday by Loud that Sadak's contract has been brought back. So in a common agreement, so as in Loud have agreed with this and Sadak has agreed with this. So there's some debate on exactly what's happening. Like has Sadak wanted to leave? Has the team wanted to get rid of him? It's probably a bit of both. I would say the more likely thing is that Sadak is wanting to potentially go elsewhere. If the team is falling apart around him, he's looking for another option. And um, as a result of that, they've basically cancelled the additional year of Sadak's contract. So he's now available to hear new proposals. He also said Sadak on another social media platform that, you know, like an update is coming soon. He's going to talk about the situation and, you know, thanking the team for their time, for his time with them, basically. So it implies to me... Salak ain't going to be staying around on this roster and where he goes next that's the question this is a very long kind of thread here but I just wanted to mention the idea that Loud has been going through financial difficulties now it seems and the theory was that maybe they're going to sell Cowanzana maybe they're going to sell less and if sadak has gone maybe that seems likely Sadak's contract is probably the one of the more expensive options as well so you know them letting him go makes that interesting as well. And then Cree Sports actually put this out there, which basically says, oh, we've got a deal. It's signed, it's sealed, it's delivered, and this whole situation is locked in. So, um, you know, kind of implies maybe, I mean, it's not implausible, is it, that Salah could go to Crew as one of the, the greatest in-game leaders of all time. It does maybe make some sense that Salah is going to be looking for an next direction there. I mean, he was even linked to NRG last year, wasn't he? But um, that never happened in the end. It's just a tough moment, I think, for the Brazilian scene in general where do they really go from here because that loud team Salak is probably going to be gone it seems almost you know inevitable that's going to be happening they have I mean probably less is going to get sold maybe Cowanzan is rumored to be potentially getting sold as well like who's even going to be left over there and I mean it's poor Pancada in a way right Pancada comes back in and now all of a sudden the team is collapsing around him again so what does it mean for Sassy is there a situation there but um yeah tough rule parties are just difficult for the Brazilian scene in general, but it does raise questions where Salak is going to go and what the future holds on that one. Wanted to share Ardis's perspective as well on a couple of things. He's certainly talking about Jorgamo and the potential team he'd like to see formed with him going into next season. Yay on Jet. Oh my god, chat! Wait! Wait, chat! Yay on Jet! Oh my god! 
and then when and then when they need a when they don't need a jet player, they put him on Senti. Oh my god, chat, chat. I've, oh my god, but no Jorgamo, bro. There's Jorgi, Jorgamo, Jo. Is it Jorgamo or Jog Jagamo Jagamo? Fuck knows. Anyway, Jogamo chat. What if I get Jogamo? Oh my god, chat. Wait, what if they do this? What 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 if we do this, chat? Does the rolls work? Do, do the rolls work, chat? Do the rolls work? I think this works. I think this might be better. I, mean, I, I think this player is the biggest underrated player in NA. This guy is the most underrated player in the whole of Valorant. I promise you, chat. This guy is unbelievable. And this guy... Listen, chat. This guy goes in with a smile on his face, bro. This guy, this guy will die, and he'll die with a smile on his face, bro. He'll die eight times in a row, and he won't care, bro. He won't care, bro. And that type of player is rare. Bro is highly rated. No, he's not. He's rated by pro players. Fans don't rate him. He's rated by pro players. Every pro player knows Jogamo's good. All the fans don't know how good he is. Everyone thinks he's good. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, I rate Jogamo. But Aspas is better, bro. No, bro. No, bro. Oh, I like it, but, but pretty is better than fucking Jogamo. No, bro. So very much intrigued to your thoughts, as always, in the comment section below. Just another couple of dominoes falling over the last couple of days that will fall into place over the coming Rostermania cycle. Sintils, of course, tweeted out the good things don't last forever. Yesterday, we saw many of the responses, and then they responded themselves and said, oh, you know, don't worry, guys, we weren't talking about the roster. Definitely weren't talking about the roster. And, um, you know, Sentinels bundle leaves the shop. So we shall see what these teams decide to do. But as usually happens, the top team Teams will make some big moves and then everything else will start to trickle into place. But very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.